Hi everybody and welcome to another weekly hangout with me, your acrylic diva, Tisa Blackburn here in San Francisco. Today we're going to uh, do part two of how to build an abstract painting from the ground up and we're looking at fiber paste as our surface. So before I get started, I'll just check and see if there are any questions right off the bat in the uh, chat room. Hi Frida, how you doing? It's good to see you there. I am going to go right to the overhead camera and then I'm going to do a few things and come back to the chat box while some things dry. So if you have questions or anything, just pop them into the chat box and I will get over there just in a minute. First things first though, let's jump to our overhead camera and take a look at what we're going to be working on today. This is what we did last week. This was our fiber paste surface that we put down and um, we put a little paint down and let it dry. So you can see the difference here. It looks a little bit desaturated from what it did last week, but that's because we had a lot of water in the paint and not um, much pigment. So we're going to use this as our background. We're going to play with that on top of that. But before we do that, I want to show you how to put down a fiber paste surface. And um, I neglected to do that the first time out because uh, I, I wanted to get that color down. So let me get the fiber paste surface down for you so you can see what we're working on. This is the fiber paste from Golden. You know, and once again, I want to make sure you guys, I'll just talk to the camera here for a quick second. I just want to make sure you guys know that you can use anything you like. I use Golden products because that's what I know best, but by all means, if there's something out there that you love and you want to use it, go right ahead, okay? But I'll be talking about Golden mostly because that's what I use and that's what I know, okay? All right, back to the program. Here we go. Um, so this is fiber paste from Golden, and I am going to find my palette knife which seems to have gone on vacation. Why do my palette knives do that? Every time I need a palette knife, it's on vacation. Um, hold on a sec, guys. This never happens unless I'm doing a live broadcast. It never happens any other time. All right, I'm going to put some music on for a quick second because I really need my palette knife to show you guys this. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. The palette, the missing palette knife was found. <laughs> okay, so what I've got is the fiber paste, and I want to put that down on my surface. And the the whole purpose of me using fiber paste on the surface is so that I can get this surface that looks like watercolor paper. So see how textured that is. It's very rough it has the feel of a very rough watercolor paper and I'm doing that for a reason. I want to get these background colors down and I don't want it to take days and days for them to dry. So I can get these background colors down pretty quickly and they will dry and then I can proceed to the next layer you know pretty soon. So because I work in multiple layers it's important for me to get these down and get going. So that's why I use the fiber paste. I also like the way that it allows me to blend the colors with a lot of water and get these very soft edges and things like that. Okay, so that's the fiber paste and the reason I use it. This is basically how you put it down. So I'm just putting it right down with my palette knife and you can see the texture that it creates there. Now there's a number of things you can do, a couple of things you can do to lessen the texture if you don't want it quite so textural. I personally love the texture, so I leave it that way. But if you want it to be a little bit smoother, put the fiber paste down and then dip your knife in water. Just get your knife nice and wet. And then you can come back and smooth it out if your knife is clean. <laughs> if your knife has something sticky on it, it, it 
has to uh, it'll make a texture but if your knife is clean oh for heaven's sakes get that off of there okay if your knife is clean we'll just edit that part out later the magic of video right let's try it again if your knife is clean and it has nothing stuck to it you can smooth out that texture you can get pretty smooth okay so if you want it to be a lot less textural just wet your knife and smooth it that way I actually like the texture the other thing you can do is um, you can mix the uh, fiber paste with a little bit of distilled water and make what we would call a slurry I I guess that's the common term something that kinda has the consistency of a gravy if you will I'm gonna put a little bit of water out here and make a tiny one right to the side ordinarily if I were doing this I would be mixing it pre-mix it get a nice consistent mixture before I did this but I just wanted to show you how you could do that with a little bit of water make sure you use distilled water and see how smooth I can get that very smooth very very smooth I'm gonna hold that up to the camera so you can really vary the uh, textural surface here I can get that pretty doggone smooth as a matter of fact can you even see that texture I'll flip it to the side there so see this heavy texture over here I'll put them side by side so you can kind of see what I mean so I've got the heavy texture here just almost like a piece of watercolor paper sort of like watercolor paper in a jar you know heavy texture much lighter texture mixed with distilled water and then if I like that heavy texture but I just want to smooth it slightly take my blade or my knife and just wet it and smooth it out lots of variation you can get there okay I hope that helps with the fiber paste when you're working with it have fun with it because I I gotta tell you I love this stuff I love me some fiber paste okay so back to our project let me get my gooey painting out of the way back to our project here we are working on a fiber paste background and we've used some of the fluids with a lot of water to get going there now let's take a look at the big painting that we are <clears throat> excuse me that we are deconstructing so one thing to remember here is that this is I can barely get this in the frame it's quite large for this camera um, one thing to remember here is that you're looking at probably eight or ten layers of paint um, and polymer medium so there's a quite a bit of depth going on here that probably doesn't read that well on the camera I'm gonna tip it a little see how glossy the surface is and I don't know if you guys can get that or not but there's a fair amount of depth going on there the way that's created is layers of gloss medium in between the layers of paint so you're not going to try and do this in one go it's going to take several layers and I'm going to walk you through about three or four layers okay all right so let's put this baby aside and we'll come back to our tiny one and what we're also going to do is we're going to look at the idea of contrast so contrast is always a really good tool to use when you're creating an abstract painting or, or any other painting for that matter but what you want to do is make sure that you've got some really nice contrast going on and that will create interest in a good composition and so on so I'm going to take some of the fluid paint I'm gonna start with some Quinn magenta big surprise there right Tisa without Quinn Magenta? No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I dream in Quinn Magenta, y'all. Um, Quinn Magenta, Hansi Yellow, and Thalo Blue, my three mixing pigments, pretty much the only ones I ever really use. Well, that's not entirely true. I use other colors, but when I'm teaching and I'm, I'm in demonstrating, I like to use these three because you can get a lot of bang for your buck and I don't have to carry lots of stuff with me and this one dried up a little bit let me get that out okay there we go a little phthalo blue there all right now I'm going to take a small paintbrush smallish paintbrush 
And if you look at the big piece here, you'll notice that there are some painted elements here. There's some stencils back there. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So on this layer that we're starting, we're going to put in some small elements just, uh, just to get us started. And they don't have to be terribly um, discreet. In other words, they can be soft edged. They don't have to be um, you know, super perfect. We're just going to start with these subtle shapes. Let's fill that one in. We've still got a fair amount of, let's go to a little bit bigger brush. That one's a little too small. We still have a fair amount of fiber paste. So things can have water mixed. The paint can have, still have water mixed into it. So you've got lots of room to maneuver there. So I've got a, a circle. How about some rectilinear types of things for contrast? So we're going to, you know, build this little painting and it's going to be similar to the big painting. It's not going to be an exact copy because that wouldn't be any fun, but um, you'll get close. You'll get the idea. So we're just building these little elements here. They're all in Quinn Magenta right now. Let's just give it some little definition there. Now let's get a little Hansi Yellow in that mixture with a little water. Warm it up a little bit, get a little orangey business going on there. And you'll notice there's no Titanium White in um, my color yet. We're not there yet. I want these to be subtle. I want them to be in the background. So we're definitely going to create softer colors with not a lot of contrast in color. We're doing contrast in shape and opacity. So see how subtle that yellow is? It's like, well, what's the point? You'll see. <laughs> Things will happen. Things will happen. Okay, so we're getting a few little fun things going on here. Let's get a little more yellow, a little Quinn Magenta. We're making an orangey color. Come back here and just help these guys out with a little something something. And I'm not sure what this is, but I'm just making it up as I go. You know, I'm a designer. I'm a maker. I just make stuff. Who knows what it is, right? Let's uh, figure that out a little better there. And see, I can come back, grab my Quinn Magenta, and put those little guys in right there. There. That makes me feel much better. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's have let's have a little um, a little more Quinn Magenta with a little more saturation. Let's have a couple of spirals here. I want one of them to go off the page. and maybe a tiny one down here. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Another one over here. Okay. All right, so that's it for that layer. That's all I'm going to do on that layer right now. Now it needs to dry before I can pour polymer medium on it. Uh, so while it is drying, it's going to take it a minute, and I might even put the hair dryer on it. Um, while it dries, I'm going to go over here and see if we have some questions in the chat room. Hi, Sharon. Uh, you have the problem with your knives. You find you usually find it right after I have improvised. <laughs> right, your um, your knives run away while you're trying to do a demo. For yeah. You guys, if you only knew what this place looks like, I mean, golly, I, it's a wonder I can, I have socks that match. 
I don't know. Maybe they don't match. I'm not sure. Um, Frida wants to know why distilled water and not tap water. Well, the best uh, the best thing you can do. Let me get over here. The best thing you can do when you are working on something that has a lot of water in it, like the fiber paste, and you put a ton of water in it, like 50/50 water. Um, you want to make sure that you don't have any biological little guys in there that could potentially grow things like mold and whatnot. The potential is there. Is it likely? I'm not that positive. But um, just better idea to use distilled water, okay, rather than tap water because you just, you just never know, okay. Sharon wants to know how thick should you apply it? Um, the fiber paste, you probably want your fiber paste to not go down more than about a quarter of an inch. So that will help it maintain the drying rate properly so that when it dries, it'll all dry uniformly and you won't have some bits that are dry and some bits that are wet. So one eighth to one fourth of an inch is about right. If you go much thicker than that, then your drying times are going to be all wonky and the potential for the product to do different things that it's not really meant to do, like maybe crack or something like that, could happen. So if you have more questions about the thickness and stuff like that, go to goldenpaints.com. I'm going to go right here and put it in the chat. Go to goldenpaints.com and there's a search bar in the upper right and you can search um, fiber paste. Just put fiber paste in there and it'll come up. The application guide will come up and stuff like that and it'll give you all the information about drying times and thicknesses and application properties and cool stuff like that. Mary Oliver. Hi Mary Oliver. How you doing? Was that layer that I just did directly over paint or medium? That layer that I just did, let's go back to the overhead. Since I'm pointing at things you can't see, right? What good is that going to do? Um, this layer is fiber paste and I let that dry. That was from last week. This layer is just fluid paint with water in it. Uh, and I'm just building up that second layer. So it's not dry yet. So once it dries, I'm going to pour polymer medium over it. And then we basically can't demo anymore on it today because it'll have to dry. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, tap dance a little bit while stuff dries. <laughs> so I can, so I can help you guys out with questions. Hey, Joe Coho. Um, FYI, I was trying to connect on my Android YouTube app and it kept failing. Really? Okay, so what's going on with Android? Um, you know, I'm a Mac person and I have no idea what Androids do, except that I would like my Android body, okay? I believe I was promised an Android body by now, according to Star Trek Stardate. Uh, it's time. I want a flying car and I want an Android body. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> um, so Joe, I don't know what the deal is with Android, the Android app. It should be just fine. I mean, an app is an app is an app, right? Um, can you see regular YouTube on, on uh, your Android app? Can you go out to the regular YouTube channel and see, and see a regular, you know, a regular YouTube, not a live one? Maybe it has something to do with the live streaming. I don't know, but I can check into it. I will check into it. Okay, let's go back to the overhead camera and see where we are with drying time. So this, this is kind of dry. This is not dry. So you know what I'm going to do? I want to show you guys the polymer medium pouring on top of this, the gloss pour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a little music for like five minutes, maybe maybe three minutes while I put the hair dryer on this because you don't want to just listen to the hair dryer while I do this, do you? And um, I will blow, I will, I will get the hair dryer on this to dry it just a little bit and then I'll come right back, okay? So hang in there for just a couple of minutes while I put the hair dryer on. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. That didn't take as long as I thought. And uh, we're going to put a polymer medium, gloss medium pour on top of this. Um, I want to just bring out the big painting once again and go, let's go to the overhead camera so we can kind of talk a little bit about what we're going to do. <clears throat> so one of the things that gives these paintings their depth and their luminosity is the fact that they've got all of these layers of gloss medium. So you can see here some of the little details like this little spiral and this little uh, stencil work back here. It's going to be really soft like these, these that we have done here because they're behind several layers of gloss medium. There's also some glaze color on top of them and things like that. So when I walk you through this, um, it's going to be very similar to that big one, but we're probably in two or three sessions not going to be able to do as many layers, but you'll certainly get the idea. So for this one, what we'll do next is just a very simple gloss medium pour. Now I've got a little bottle of medium here, and this has the old label on it. It says polymer medium gloss. The new labels at Golden say gloss medium. Very same thing. Anytime you use a medium or a gel that says gloss in the name, that means it's going to dry absolutely clear. And that is our whole uh, you know, purpose today is to do a very clear, clear layer. So we're going to just pour this down and let it dry. And that's just how hard that is. So here we go. I have got a black, a black, listen to me. <laughs> Clearly this is a white garbage bag, not a black garbage bag. This is a white garbage bag. And the reason I use those is because the polymer medium doesn't stick to them. And I can pour on this, it won't go all over my table. And um, when I'm finished, I can pick this up and it won't stick to the surface and that kind of thing. It's pretty easy for cleanup. So that's the scoop on that. So let me uh, get over here and get situated. Um, I'm going to take my little jar. Now ordinarily when I'm pouring at the studio, and I'm in my little home studio so I can't be too messy, but when I'm pouring at the studio I have the big gallon containers of polymer medium and uh, I, I off pour them into a little cup. I never pour directly from the big container because there you go, you pour half a gallon out and you don't really need it. So I'm going to tip it slightly, just give it a little tip slightly like that, and I'm going to start up at the top. Let's go this way so I can kind of, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm going to start up at the top and I'm just going to pour like that, ever so slowly and gently, just pour like so. Now here's the important part. If you haven't seen my other pouring video, this is the important part. And hang on because this is going to be like you're on a roller coaster. I have to bang this and it's going to make everything jiggle, the camera and everything. Bang, 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 right? All four sides. Bang, bang, bang. You should see me do this on a three foot canvas. It's pretty hilarious. Okay. Are you all dizzy now? <laughs> all right. So you can see I've got this area here that's got open space. So I'm going to come back to the top of my canvas and do the whole process again. Just really slowly, just a little bit of polymer. Just pour it right there. You won't need as much this time because it's going to meet the other polymer halfway down. Same thing, bang, get ready guys. This drives the people below me in my studio crazy. Because I'm banging, I'm banging like mad. Okay, one more time for good measure. All right, now see how even that is? Super even. Take a look at that. It's just as slick as glass, baby. 
Look at that. Isn't that delicious? Mm. Ta-da. Okay. Now, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I can go home now, right? Oh, I am home. Never mind. But I'm all gooey. So you guys, <laughs> give me a minute to wipe my hands because I can't touch the computer just yet. So I'm going to wipe my hands off before I come back to the camera. Now, one thing... Um, one thing I do want to point out here is it's not a bad idea to tip this up for a minute or two. Let's just tip it up. See, I'm putting some little fluids behind, um, beneath it. Just tip it up for just a minute just to see if you've got any excess on there it'll roll down to the bottom and you'll get a super super thin layer. Leave it like that for maybe ah, two or three minutes um, and then check and see. I can see that there's a little bit down here at the bottom. You probably can't see it. It's off camera. Um, that is just puddling up a little bit. And the reason I do that is I want this layer to be super thin and the reason I want it super thin is that will prevent it from cracking. Anytime you get a big puddle of polymer medium, gloss medium, on the canvas and you inadvertently leave a big puddle, it could potentially crack. Now on this little tiny canvas it's probably not going to do that because the, the canvas is so small and I use such a small amount of polymer medium. But on big canvases I'm going to flip this around now and do it the other way. See that excess that's coming off right here? That's excess that I don't need on the canvas. I'm going to tip it this way like so. And we'll just let it go for a minute or two. Um, on really big canvases, when you do this on really big canvases, you could actually cause the canvas to sag in the middle if you have too much polymer medium on it. So really err on the side of caution with these layers of polymer medium. Make them thin. Be patient and make them thin because if you try to make one big thick layer at one time it can be a disaster. I've actually created disasters that way. And um, while this is doing that let me wipe my hands and come back to the camera and talk to you for a second. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I'm just getting one layer of polymer off my hands. Um, so actually you want to be pretty clear about the way you're doing that layer of polymer medium because if you're not, like I said, you make a big puddle and you can get into a real bad situation. Um, as you may know, I wrote an... Uh, uh, what do you call it? I wrote a column for Acrylic Artist Magazine for a period of time, a year or two years, can't remember. And um, one time they asked me to write an article about one of my mistakes. Yikes. So I did. And what I uh, put in that article was about some, some gel layers and things that I had done. I hurried, I didn't take my time, and I cracked some layers. It was a disaster. And it took me a very long time to get it all fixed up. But I did get it fixed up. So you can go over to Acrylic Artist Magazine. I think you can probably Google the article. Um, just, I'm not sure what the title of the article is anymore. It's been a while. But just go, you know, Acrylic Artist Magazine plus Tisa Blackburn. And it'll, it'll come up. You guys will get that. If you can't find it, let me know and I'll find it for you. Um, so that's a scoop on that. Make sure you do those layers thin. If you want to get that glossy surface, you know, you got to do those thin layers. So see where the polymer is here on the edge? I'm trying to show that to the camera. See that? That's what we're talking about. That Those layers of polymer that drip off and then um, you bang the canvas and all this other craziness and that'll get you a really nice layer. Okay, let's see if we have any more questions. Joe doesn't know why it fails on Android, but you're watching, you're watching one of the uploaded videos using Android. So maybe it has something to do with the live streaming. Yeah, has to do with live. Okay, uh, Frida wants to know why pour and not brush because of brush marks. 
If I pour it, I get no brush marks. If I brush it, I, you can see my brush marks. It's very difficult to get that super glossy, glass-like surface with a brush. About pouring is about the only way, okay? Okay, um, just check in here. I want to just check in with my my layer it's looking pretty good see how nice and glossy and thin that is so I'm going to put it flat and let it dry now when I put them flat I usually like to put them on I will take four of the gel jars and I put them on one on each corner and let it dry I don't want it to sit down in the um, polymer gloss in the gloss medium like sit down on the plastic and stuff because then it gets really weird little edges and things like that so I just I just put it on four jars like that okay make sure it's level and I even go so far as to using a carpenter's level and check the level okay because if you don't it'll roll off the canvas and all your hard work will roll off with it <laughs> okay all right any more questions for me? I'm gonna we're gonna wrap up the demo because that's all we can do today. That has to dry and then we'll come back next week with layer number three.